Hello everyone, this is LW Gaming and welcome to a new installment of Future Languages series. Today, today we're going to take a look at the uh, the upcoming major update coming to Global, which will be featuring Sagani in Amadeus in the next major update. So let's get into the banners and see what they are. Of course, the first week will be their will be the new, new will be the new heroes banner featuring the two new ones like like Sagani and Amadeus running from June 29th all the way to July 26th. And of course, it's a radar banner, meaning that you're not guaranteed. So you summon at your own risk if you're planning to get those two. On week two, starting on July 6th all the way to July 19th, it will be featuring Girl in the Shell and Light of Genesis. These two are pretty solid units in their own ways. Of course, Light of Genesis is the is the top contender PvP. I mean, not necessarily the best PvP unit, but it is pretty decent out there. You can actually use her in almost any box you, you use. Girl of Shell is a bit, um, I would say, RNG. Like, she's not bad, but it's just that she she could be random at sometimes. But she is a fun unit to have when if you have her already. So if you're if you're missing the, any of these units, you can pull for them, but keep in mind, again, it's a radar banner. Uh, you, you're probably going to run into some risk of like having off banner or the unit that you do not actually want. So yeah, summon at your own risk. Okay, on week three, uh, there is a there's there's a destiny banner and some and a two special banners. So anyways, the destiny banner will be featuring Gizarov. Alpha and Cortez, and the other two banners we got the Wish banner, uh, which is featuring Languages of Four and Five Heroes, and then an Equipment banner. And I will probably say this is worth uh, pulling because there's an accessory that that does the skill skill to the cooldown reduction when you met certain condition. You can find more of that in Wikigrisser. And the third week begins on July 13th all the way to July 26th. If I haven't said that already. Okay, on the fourth week, starting on the the twentieth of July, all the way to to August second, this will be featuring two new Destiny banners. I mean, two returning Destiny banners, or actually one new Destiny banner and one returning one. Uh, the new one is uh, the Meteor Strike team. Uh, lost them, Epsilon and Vincent. And then the other Destiny banner is the classic, Leden, Rachel, and Ulta Muller. If you're missing any of these units, I will highly recommend you to summon for them because there's no uh, there's no losing in that one if you're missing one of them uh, in their respect in their respective banners. Let's just say, for example, if you're still missing lost them, you can try you can pull for him if he's the only one missing. But if you're missing two units on there, yeah, there are still risks that you need to consider. But however, if you got one, then that's fine. You can get the other next time, but there's a good chance that they might not return in the near future. But of course, what I mean not return is that not return as a Destiny banner. But I could be wrong, but anyways, don't get your hopes up if you're missing one of them. So anyways, uh, what, what are my plans on this uh, banners? So anyways, I'm going to explain what, what I'm going to think about when it comes to this update. So. But the first week, obviously, I don't see any usage of those new, new units for me. I mean, at least for me, yours could be different. So I'm not going to be pulling for those, unfortunately. But I am going to pull for someone on week three, which is uh, which is for, which is Alpha. Like I wanted to like get her and then finish up the collection here, because like you know, Alpha is the only unit that uh, in that in that batch in this batch still missing. Yes, I know it's pretty weird and embarrassing because missing one one unit that's a uh, like that's featured on the banner is I don't know. So, anyways, I'm gonna try to get Alpha. I don't think it will, it will be that hard since she is the only one missing. And then fourth week, I can just do an easy skip because I got the I got those three units, so there's no need to pull more. Moving on. Uh, what events slash changes to expect? Well, we got two new things. Uh, we got Ocean of the Stars. I believe this is a Secret Realm event, if I'm not mistaken. 
you know, like we go through kind of shows any uh, all the events that are happening in the major update, but this one I don't know if it's actually really a limited time Sega Realm event, but it could be something else. And of course, the other thing that we're gonna look into is Forbidden Battleground, that has returned once again. So get those uh juicy, juicy currency to get the SP stones, or whichever you need. And of course, we're not expecting any changes uh, coming to this major update. The quality of life changes, to be specific. Yeah, there's none in this update, so yeah, nothing there. But however, we're gonna look into the quality of life changes coming in the update after, after Sagani and Amadeus update. So yeah, there's something that we need to look into soon. We'll we'll talk about that when the time comes. Okay, let's talk about exclusives and confession. So two new exclusives. Uh, these two are the headwares, uh, one for Coltair and one for Waytham, the first un limited unit to have an exclusive. Okay, let's talk about Coltair's, uh, Coltair's gear really quick. So Coltair's gear uh, increases HP by 10%. When Ally has Shatter Flame uh, debuff, which is, uh, which is unique to Coltair, uh, attack and the int plus 10% to allies within two blocks. After causing skill damage to an enemy, gain skill damage plus 25%. Pretty straightforward. A Clotter, I can see how dangerous he could become. He could be when it comes to this exclusive. Basically, it enables your allies to deal even more damage to them, as long as he he uh, inflict them with shattering shatter flames, a debuff on them, which is easy to do with just by just simply splashing them with AOE. And the second one receiving it is, of course, Waytham, like I mentioned earlier. Anyways, his gear is pretty unique. HP plus 10%. When entering battle, if the enemy has despair, hero damage plus 10%. And if the skill is used, cooldown minus 1. So anyways, how this works is pretty straightforward. So the if the enemy has despair, and also, and also, if if he uses a skill while doing that, while doing so, that skill cooldown would be reduced by one turn, which honestly is pretty am amazing when it comes to uh, offensive capabilities. And finally, the confession. I believe a lot of people are thinking like, who could it be? Well, last time we got a Dank Elmo. This time we got Lightbringer, a, a new new confession. Kind of shocking, right? Well. Uh, the game is trying to roll out those confessions as soon as possible, you know. We're getting there. We're getting uh, almost all of the female allies to have confession. This time is Lightbringer's turn. So if you have Lightbringer already at Magazon Heartbond, you can confess her when this update arrives. Okay, let's talk about casting pattern skills. Uh, there are four heroes that, that are getting one in this update. So first off, we got Sholinka. Attack plus 5%. When missing the kill with Bloody Grip, which is her 3C, the cooldown of that skill will be reduced by 3 turns. So if you if you did not end up getting a kill with the, with your 3C, don't worry because the game has, light, has actually forgave you a little bit by reducing the cooldown by 3 turns. So that means that if you actually miss killing someone with your 3C, you'll get that back after uh, 2 more turns instead of a 5 turn cooldown. Which is pretty nice, just a forgiving kind of part. But of course, uh, most of the time you should probably try to kill people, people with that skill, but... Anyways, if you end up fully cast the Shilinka, then don't disappoint yourself, because you basically uh, open up a safety net for her. Next up we got Varash. I believe a lot of people are actually quite excited about this, or some people are. Anyways, attack plus 5% when when in mortal status, which is the time when he actually took a fatal hit and then revives with the 1% HP. Uh, anyways, whenever, whenever that happens, uh, he will now attack first whenever you actively enter in combat. So it, it, this only works if you are attacking. So like, uh, for example, if he's like about to die, he will guarantee to do uh, like a strike first if you are attacking. But however... Yeah, I, as you can see here, is pretty dev when it, when it comes to like a first strike from Varash. 
So like if he's actually in a brink of in a brink of death, he can actually like do some serious work against the opponents. No matter how low his HP is, he will still dish out a high amount of damage if Varash is built correctly, that is. If not, then he this is not useful. Anyways, will I ever see Varash in Apex? Maybe not, but who knows? I could be wrong about that. Although I did see him sometimes in AI Arena, so that's somewhere he might belong when it comes to uh, PvP, but other than that, I don't see the reason why you want to cast him, but eh, if, you, if you actually like Rush a lot lately, then yeah, go for it. I'm not stopping you. Okay, third one, we got Angelina. Attack plus 5%. When triggering at again, has 30% chance to gain attack plus 20%. Last four turns, pretty straightforward. So, whenever she uh, she she trigger her act again, uh, there's a there's a decent amount of chance that she will get attack bonus on her by 20%, which will last four turns. Straightforward uh, is is pretty good in uh, offensive uh, single target capabilities or AOE, depending on how you're gonna use her. Although, I don't know, her usage has been in the mix nowadays. But now, I think with this casting patterns, I could see her have a with potential to be an Apex uh, contestant. And finally, we got o Oliver, uh, which is the SR uh, story unit. Attack and crit plus 5% when on defensive terrain. When triggering talent effect, uh, it will steal one more buff. So yeah, Oliver is the king of stealing buffs. So like, if you have him fully casted, then wow, you're a madman. Because like, whenever he's on defensive terrain, when triggering talent effect, he will in not only stealing one buff, but he will steal two instead if you fully cast him, which will make him a little bit more useful, to be honest. Despite being an SR, that's quite impressive for him. And finally, before we go, I want to talk about the reminder of the major update after Sagani and Namidia's banner goes away. And in case guys are still living under a rock, uh, there is a, in fact another collab. Yes, I know collab, collabs are kind of uh, exciting events, but can you believe this? A co another collab after two more major updates? Like we just got, we just got Kuno Kiski collab like. Uh, not too long ago, actually. But now we're getting into another collab. Like, what? So, anyways, this uh this collab feature features a three characters from uh from the Sega IP, also known as uh, Shining Resonance uh, Refrain, or that that's their latest ent entry before the series got canceled, I believe, based on what I've know. Anyways, seeing them in the game is pretty exciting, if you ask me. And since this is a collab, you should probably consider saving for them because they're not going to come back anytime soon because as far as I know, when it comes to reruns, there isn't any other reruns other than the first four we got in the game. So don't get your hopes up if you actually, if you think about having them rerun. Although the possibility is still out there, but it's just that it's kind of hard to say because I hardly see any reruns anymore. So hopefully... Zealand Games could look into this and probably do some reruns on the past events that we already got. I although yes, I know that there's some some collab units already aged out and not being viable anymore. But either way, there are still other collab units that we have so far are pretty useful out there. So I'm just hoping that we someday uh, the old collab events we had previously will see a return. That's why I'm hoping. Please, Zelon Games, make it happen. So, anyways, hope you all find this video informative, and uh, see you all next time.